Shana Tova. Let me hear all those voices. Shana Tova. Oh, I love that sound. I hope you love it as much as I do. We invite you to come in to, to Rosh Hashanah morning. We're going to pray. We're going to take out the Torahs. And we're going to invite our souls to head back to uh, some kind of home. One, two, three. Come on back to your father's truth and return to the holy root. Come on back to the wisdom of home and realize that you're not alone. Shine your light like your mother said. You were there when we were led. There's a path for us all to see. Just grab that lamp, it's at your feet. of that opening prayer. It is a tree of life to those who hold fast to it. All of us today are here with open hearts for a new year. We connect to the words of Torah and we begin our service on page 166. We continue in the middle of that page, page 166, as we pray responsibly. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, and of the impulse within us for justice and mercy, we pray that this hour of worship may be one of vision and inspiration. Help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter this sanctuary in search and in need, all who bring to this place. Rise for Baruch Hu on page 167.
the new year begins, surrounded by family and friends, we turn to page 170 for the watchword of our faith. Shema Yisrael. Continue on one seventy. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol avavcha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol meodecha ve'hayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anochi mitzavecha. Hayom al levavecha, veshinan tam levanecha, vedibar tabam, beshib techa habeve techa, velet techa vadere, veshoch vecha uvekumecha, ukshar tam leot al yadecha, vehayulet tota fod ben enecha. Uchetavet am al mezuzot betecha uvisharecha leman tiskeru vasitem et kol misvotai vitem kedoshim lelohechem ani Adonai elohechem asher hotzeti etem. Me'eret mitraim, liot lachem Elohim, ani Adonai Elohechem emet. True and enduring, beloved, precious, awesome, good, and beautiful is this eternal teaching. This truth we hold to be forever certain. The eternal God is our Son. Rock of Jacob. You abide through all generations. Your name is eternal. Your throne stands firm. Your sovereignty and faithfulness are everlasting. O God, you redeemed us from Egypt. For this, the people who felt your love sang songs of praise to you. who humbles the proud and raises the lowly, who frees the captive and redeems the oppressed. All praise to God Most High, the source of blessing. Like Moses and Israel, we sing to you now this song of rejoicing. Elohim, 
Each generation has its path, each a vision of its own. Our mothers and fathers kindled light. A life unmarred by hate and war. Homage to the faithful who came before us. Honor to the generations of Israel, our people. All honor to those who illuminate our Together, remember us unto life, O sovereign who delights in life, and inscribe us in the book of life, O God of life. Magen Abraham, Bezrahat Sarah. Great is the eternal power at the heart of life, mighty the love that is stronger than death. Life's harsh winds uproot the weak. Its hard rains beat down upon our kin. Let those who stand support the falling keep faith with those who lie in the dust. To the sick we must bring healing, and to those who are bound, release. How good to redeem the ancient pledge, for joy to blossom in arid soil. We give thanks for the power to live and to act, and for the blessing of
us proclaim the sacred power of this day is awesome and full of dread. For on this day your dominion is exalted, your throne established in steadfast love. There in truth you reign. In truth you are judge and arbiter, counsel and witness. You write and you seal, you record and recount. You remember deeds long forgotten. You open the book of our days and what is written there proclaims itself for it bears the signature of every human being. Together, the great shofar is sounded, the still small voice is heard, the angels gripped by fear and trembling declare in awe, this is the day of judgment, for even the hosts of heaven are judged, and as all who dwell on earth and in the As the shepherd seeks out the flock and makes the sheep pass under the staff, so do you muster and number and consider every soul, setting the bounds of every creature's life and decreeing its destiny. Oh! 
page 178 together. Repentance, prayer, and charity, temper, judgment, severe decree. This is your glory. You are slow to anger, ready to forgive. O oh God, it is not the death of sinners you seek, but that they should turn from their ways and live. Until the last day, you wait for them, welcoming them as soon as they turn to you. You have created us to know what we are. We are but flesh and blood. Our origin is dust, and dust is our end. Each of us is a shattered urn, grass that must wither, a flower that will fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, a particle of dust floating on the wind, a dream soon forgotten. Please be seated. We take these next few moments for our own personal and private silent meditations through page 187. And as we do that, we invite all of the participants in our Torah service to please come forward and join us here on the Bima. We now pray silently.
meditations of my heart be acceptable to you. So we turn to page 120 for the Torah service. We will begin and we will be led by Jeff Freeman. Sandy Kaplan will carry the Torah for us and Stuart Sackle will serve as Hagbah. Ein kamocha va Elohim Adonai bien ki ma'asecha malchutecha malchut kol olamin umel shal techa bechol dorvador Adonai melech Adonai Malach, Adonai Yimloch, Leolam Bayed, Adonai Oz, Liamo Yitain, Adonai Yevarech, Et Amo Ba Shalom. <laughs> Avinu Malkenu together. Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu, we have sinned against you. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our children. Avinu Malkenu, make an end to sickness, war, and famine. Avinu Malkenu, make an end to all oppression. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us for blessing in the Book of Life. Avinu Malkenu, let the new year be a good year for us. Avinu Malkenu, fill our hands with blessing. Avinu Malkenu, be gracious and answer us, for we have little merit. Treat us generously and with kindness, and be our help. Avinu Malkenu, Shema. Oh. 
Adonai, Adonai, the eternal one, the eternal God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin, and granting pardon. Adonai, Adonai, El Rahum This Rosh Hashanah, surrounded by family and friends, we repeat together the watchword of our faith. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Shema Yisrael.
Actually, they can be found on page 124. Our Torah will first be blessed by Andy Bachnick, and then chanted by Lee Mora, Sharon Beagleman, and Ellie Bitgar. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Va'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Bachar Banu Miko Ha'amim. Vinatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vayahi achar hadevarim ha'ele v'ha Elohim nisa et Abraham vayomer elav va Abraham vayomer hineni vayomer kachna. Et bincha et yichidecha, asher ahavta et yitzchak, belech lecha el eretz hamoria, vehalehu sham leolah al achad heharim, asher amar alecha. Vayash came Abraham. Baboker, Vayachavosh et Chamoro, Vayikach et Shene ne Arav Ito, Vayed Yitzchak Beno, Vayavaka at Se Ola, Vayakom, Vayelech El Hamakom, Asher Amar Loha Elohim. Ayom Hashli Shi Vaisa Avraham et Enav Vayar et Makom Merachok Vayomer Avraham El Nearav Shivulachem Po Im Hachamor Vani Vahanaar Nelecha at Ko V'nishtachavev v'nashuva aleichem. V'yikach Abraham et atse ha'ola. V'yasem al Yitzchak v'no. V'yikach v'yado et ha'esh v'et ha'ma'achelet. V'yelechu sh'neihem yachdav. Yomer Isaac El Avraham Avid Vayomer Avi Vayomer Hineni Veni Vayomer Hine Haesh Veha Etim Veaye Haser Leola Vayomer Avraham Elohim your Elo Hase Leola Veni Vail Hushnehem Yachtav Vayavo El Hamakom Asher Amar Loha Elohim Vayven Sham Avraham Et Hamiz Beyach Vayaroch Et Aitim Vaya kod et ishak beno, vaya sem oto al hamiz beach mi maal va etim. Vaishlach Avraham et yato, vaikach et hamachelet lishot et beno, vaikra elav. Malach Adonai min hashamayim vayomer Avraham Avraham vayomer hineni vayomer al tishlach yadcha 
Elhanar, Beltaslo, Meuma, Ki Ata Yadati, Kire Elohim, Ata Velo Hasata, Epincha et Yachidcha, Mimeni. Vaisa Abraham et Enav, Vayar vehine ail, Achar, Nechaz besevach bekarnav, Vayelech Abraham, Vayikach et ail, Vayalehu leola tachapeno, Vayikra Abraham, Shem HaMakom HaHu Adonai Yirae Asher Yamar Hayom Vehar Adonai Yirae Vayikra Malach Adonai El Avraham Shenit Min HaShamayim Vayomer Bi Nishpati Neum Adonai Ki Yaan Asher Asita et Adavar Haze Velo Chasachta et Bincha et Jechidecha Ki Varech Avarechecha Veharbe Arba et Zaracha Kekochevei Hashamayim Vechachol Asher al tzvat hayam Vayira saracha et she'ar oyevav Vehit barachu vizaracha kol goye ha'aretz Ekev asher shamat abakali Vayeshov Avraham el na'arav Vayakumu vayelechu yachtav el be'er shava Vayeshev Avraham bi'ver shava Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher natan lanu Torah emet v'chaye olam nata b'tochenu Baruch ata Adonai noten haTorah. We rise now in honor of the Torah. continue now with the Haftarah portion. If you'd like to follow along, we're going to jump to page 199. Our Haftarah will be blessed by David Gadhart and then read by Lisa Barbas. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Bin vim tovim, Baratza the divrehem, the neemarim beemet, Baruchata Adonai, Habocher batora, Uv Moshe Abdo, Iv Yisroel Amo, Uvin vie. Ha emet 
Vatsedek. Seek the Eternal One while there is still time. Call out while God is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the sinful their thoughts. Let them return to the Eternal One who will show them compassion to our God who is quick to forgive. For my thoughts are not like yours, nor are your ways like mine, says the Eternal One. For high as the heavens above the earth, so are my ways high above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. Just as rain and snow come down from the sky without returning, but water the earth, making it blossom and bear fruit, yielding seed for sowing and bread to eat, so it is with the word that comes from my mouth. It does not return to me unfulfilled without having accomplished my desire and achieved what I send it to do. For you shall go out in joy, you shall be led forth in peace. Before you mountains and hills shall break out in joyous song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Cypresses shall grow instead of thorn bushes, myrtle instead of briar. These shall be a monument to God, an everlasting sign that will stand firm. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sur Kol HaOlamin Tzadik Bakol HaDorot HaEl HaNeeman HaOmer VeOseh Hamdaber Umkayem Shakol Davarav Emet Vatzedek Al HaTorah the al ha avoda, the al ha han viim, the al yom ha zikaron ha ze, shinatatalanu, adonai eloheinu, likavod, ultafaret, al ha kol, adonai eloheinu anachnu modim lach, umvarchim otach, Yit barak shimcha, bafi kol hai tamid, leolam va ed, udvarcha emet vikayam la ad, barucha ta adonai, melechal kol ha aretz, megadesh yisrael, viyom hazikaron. We now turn to page 218 for our special prayers. We will be led by Joan Crenshaw and Dr. Deanna Master. Eternal God, we pray to you for the whole house of Israel, scattered over the earth, yet bound together by a common history and united by a common heritage of faith and hope. Be with our brothers and sisters whose lives are made hard because they are Jews. Give them strength to endure and lead them soon from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light. Bless this holy congregation and all who serve it. Together with all other holy congregations in all lands near and far, uphold us, shield us, and bestow upon us abundant life and health and peace and happiness in all our dwelling places. Bring to fulfillment the blessing of Moses. The eternal your God make you a thousand times as many as you are and bless you as God has promised you. Amen. O oh God, send your healing to the sick, your comfort to all who are in pain or anxiety, your tender love to the sorrowing hearts among us. Be their refuge through their time of trial 
as they pass from weakness to strength, from suffering to consolation, from lonely fear to the courage of faith. Amen. We pray for all who hold positions of leadership and responsibility in our national life. Let your blessing rest upon them and make them responsive to your will so that our nation may be to the world an example of justice and compassion. Deepen our love for our country and our desire to serve it. Strengthen our power of self-sacrifice for our nation's welfare. Teach us to uphold its good name by our own right conduct. Cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our nation is in the hands of all of its citizens. Imbue us with zeal for the cause of liberty in our own land and in all lands. And help us always to keep our homes safe from affliction, strife, and war. Amen. We pray for the land of Israel and its people. May its borders know peace, its inhabitants tranquility. And may the bonds of faith and fate which unite the Jews of all lands be a source of strength to Israel and to us all. God of all lands and ages, answer our constant prayer with a Zion once more aglow with light for us and for all the world. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Ye hallelujah, shem Adonai, his gav shemo levado. standing as we welcome our shofar blower to the Bima, Danny Stern, as we turn to page 211. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshan v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu lishmoa kol shofar Amen 
Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekiyamanu Vehigianu Lazerman Page 213. Your love is everlasting to those who revere you. Your righteousness continues to children's children, to those who keep your covenant, who remember your commandments and do them. I remember your kindnesses, Lord, your great goodness to the house of Israel. Lord, your God is a God of compassion who will not forget the sworn covenant with your fathers and mothers. I will meditate on your, way, your precepts and keep your ways before my eyes. Justice, justice shall you follow that you may live. Baruch atah Adonai zocher habrit. Now we call to mind the great moment when Israel stood at Sinai and heard the voice of the shofar. There our people entered into your covenant to be your witnesses to the world. From there they went forth to proclaim the laws by which the free may live and the enslaved find hope. That covenant we renew when we hear the sound of the shofar. From that day to this have we, a people acquainted with miracle and disaster, encountered you again and again on our path of life. And you are present, O Eternal One, not on peaks of vision alone. At any moment, we may turn and find you. The whisper of a thought, the most humble touch of being, may lead us to you. So endlessly revealed amid your concealments, 
You stand awaiting our search to lead us with many a fall, upward to heights we tremble to climb. All this we hear when the voice of the shofar, stranger among us. And that shofar sound heralds yet another day whose promise is our hope. Then shall begin the time of peace of which we dream. A world of truth shall be revealed to us. And together we shall rejoice in the sovereignty of God. Distant the goal, at times it fades from sight. For we are free, free to love, free to build the sovereignty, free to hate, free to tear it down. And yet the dream is not forgotten, the vision does not fail. It is the meaning of our lives. Come what may, we shall hold fast to it. Even when the hope seems lost, we shall say the sovereignty of heaven could begin today if we would but hearken to God's voice. The great trumpet will sound and summon us to serve under your banner. On that day, the great shofar shall be sounded. Happy is the people that knows that joyful sound. And it shall be said on that day, this is our God for whom we wait, whose deliverance we await in hope. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall be made level, and the rough places a plain. The glory of God. Shout joyfully to the eternal all the earth. Break forth, sing aloud, shout praise. Aruch Ata Adonai, Shomea Kol Truat Amo Yisrael Barachamim. We praise you, the merciful God, who hearkens to the sound of the shofar. That's where I was this summer, on the very top of the Azraeli Center, the tallest building in Tel Aviv, taking in a 360 degree view of Israel. I admit that while riding the elevator up to the Outlook, I was a bit nervous that my heart would fall right into my stomach when I stepped out onto the helipad. But instead, I saw grandeur, a panoramic view to which I could only say, wow like my friends in the video. To the west, the Mediterranean, 
clear blue waters as far as we could see. To the east, Jerusalem. Look to the horizon for the city of gold, the heart and soul of the Jewish people, but also the heart of conflict and tension within her walls and beyond into the West Bank. We turn to the north, to the high-tech centers that line the coast, leading to Haifa and further to Lebanon and Syria. And then we turn south, beyond the city, into the desert, to Eilat and Egypt. Standing almost 50 stories above the city, ours was a bird's eye view of Israel and everything that is happening there. I went to Israel with the American Israel Education Foundation, the charitable arm of APAC, for a week-long rabbinic seminar. There were just 20 of us, and I felt honored to have been chosen. The purpose was to meet people from all different walks of life and different points along the political spectrum. We talked frankly about the reality of the political situation and of all the messiness that that entails. We were encouraged to wrestle with what we saw and what we heard, noting that nothing is ever just black and white, but a whole lot of gray. And we were urged to ask any question that we wanted of our speakers, as well as in our Ask APEC Anything sessions. No matter how challenging or how heretical it might have seemed, and we did. And thank God for Shabbat, because there was no other time in the itinerary for even a breath. In just one day, we visited with members of the Knesset from both the left and the right. We woke up at 4.30 that morning, not to climb Masada for the sunrise, but to observe workers entering Israel from the West Bank at the Rachel border crossing at the outskirts of Jerusalem. They had to get up at 3 o'clock, as they do every day, to allow enough time to cross the border to get to work on time. Later that day, we crossed into Ramallah to meet Saib Arakat, the chief negotiator for the Palestinian Authority. To tell you the truth, I was shocked to see the building is called the PLO headquarters. I didn't know the PLO still existed. And even later that day, we listened to Chen, a resident at Kfar Aza, which is a kibbutz just a mile from the Gaza border. And I quickly realized that had a siren sounded, our slow pokey group would never have made it to a shelter in the allotted 10 seconds before the bombs would have hit. And shortly after we left, the rockets started falling. That week, I met with IDF generals, journalists, artists, doctors, activists, scholars, students, both Israelis and Palestinians. We talked politics and security, about LGBTQ inclusion, and about adults with special needs. We also talked about health care and poverty, education, equality, immigration. What a trip it was. And while I found it to be invigorating and enlightening, it was also very difficult and deeply challenging. Most of all, meeting with all of these people reminded me that everyone has a story and a different way of seeing things. The truth is, I see it my way and you see it yours, even if we're looking at exactly the same thing. Listen to an excerpt from Yehuda Amichai's poem, Tourists, one of my favorites. Once, I sat on the steps by a gate at David's Tower. I placed my two heavy baskets at my side. A group of tourists was standing around their guide, and I became their target marker. You see that man with the baskets? Just right of his head, there's an arch from the Roman period, just right of his head. But he's moving, he's moving. I said to myself, redemption will come only if their guide tells them. You see that arch from the Roman period? It's not important. But next to it, left and down a bit, there sits a man who's brought fruit and vegetables for his family. What we see depends on our perspective. Are we the tourist or the resident? Do we see what we want to see or what we're told to see? And is what we see somehow connected to our own experience? It's like the parable of the, of the blind friend and the elephant, each one trying to decipher what the animal looks like. Close your eyes and imagine. The first one touches the elephant's trunk, 
and feels a long, thick tube and determines that an elephant must be like a very thick snake. Now the second, reaching for the elephant's ear, finds it soft and floppy and exclaims, an elephant is actually like a great big fan. The third, who pats the side of the elephant, finds it rough and solid and believes that an elephant is a great wall. While the fourth crouches down and feels the legs and asserts that the elephant is like a tree trunk. And finally, the fifth feels the tail and describes that an elephant is a tiny piece of rope. You get it, right? Actually, the moral of the story changes depending on the place and the culture where it's told. In some versions, the friends actually come to blows because they believe the others are lying. In another telling, they resolve their conflict by listening and collaborating with each other to see the full elephant. And in still another, a sighted person comes along and describes the elephant in its entirety. And the blind group discovers that they were all partially right and all partially wrong, recognizing that while one's experience is true, it may not be the entirety of the truth. And so, it takes me back to the top of the Azrieli building, and I realize that even with my bird's eye view, it is just one more perspective in an ongoing struggle. On the first night of our trip, we met with Yossi Klein Halevi, who recently published a book entitled Letters to My Palestinian Neighbor. Ten letters to a hypothetical neighbor living somewhere on the next hill and across the wall that separates them. It's a heartfelt plea for peace but mostly for understanding. He attempts to explain Zionism and Israel from a Jewish point of view. One of the main obstacles to peace, he says, is an inability to hear the other side's story. And so he wants to start the conversation with these letters that are also available in Arabic online at no cost. And he welcomes the Palestinian response, the other side of the story, knowing it will be difficult but promises to respond to every letter and social media post he receives because what Halevi wants most of all is to engage in an ongoing and meaningful discussion with the other side. So far, the project has prompted a range of replies, including the recent New York Times book review, a Palestinian response to his Israeli neighbor. And although it's hard to read, at least from my perspective, engaging in the conversation feels good but it's different on the national stage. When we met with Saeed Arakat in the West Bank, he told us point blank, we don't have peace because Netanyahu doesn't want it. And when we were in the Knesset, we were told point blank, we don't have peace because Abbas doesn't want it. Both sides fervently believe what they say, but I don't believe that they are actually listening to each other. There's a psychological explanation. It's called confirmation bias, the tendency to search for and focus on information that confirms our pre-existing beliefs. And most of us have it. We watch news stations that fit our personal agenda and read the newspapers, assuming we still read newspapers in the same way. We talk politics with people who already agree with us, and we share views on social media with our friends. Isn't that how everything on Facebook is already slanted to my political bent. Somehow Facebook knows, and once I've clicked, the algorithm sends me more. A few years ago, while I was listening to the radio, I heard about the opposite button, or at least I thought I did. In reality, I think I just wanted it to exist. The opposite button is the antidote to confirmation bias. Imagine if it were real. You would read a news story that showed up on your page, and when you were done, you'd click the opposite button to read a story from the opposing perspective. Educating ourselves on an entire issue and listening to another's interpretation opens up a whole new worldview. And the thing is, we don't have to see eye to eye in order to understand the other viewpoint. In fact, I'm sure we won't agree, but we do have a responsibility to listen and not just stay in our own little bubble. Certainly, having a difference of opinion is human nature, and life would be pretty boring otherwise. I'm sure we've all heard the saying, two Jews, three opinions. Of course, two rabbis, 
five opinions? Can you imagine our staff meetings? But one of the things I love about our Jewish tradition, as exemplified in the Talmud, is that both the majority and the minority opinions are preserved as legitimate and recorded for future generations. Not only is it just tolerated to have an opinion, but it's actually encouraged. Look at how the House of Hillel and the House of Shammai, two schools of thought, are constantly in debate throughout the text. As it happens, the law almost always follows Hillel, but six times it goes according to Shammai, and one debate lasted three years. In the end, it was decided by a heavenly voice, declaring, Elu ve'elu divrei Elohim chayim, these and these are the words of the living God. While the law ultimately is decided in favor of the house of Hillel, both arguments are recognized. And in spite of this, we do live in our own little bubble, reinforced by the confirmation bias of our community. We are busy, we have obligations at home and at work with our children and our parents. There really isn't enough time for everything, let alone to be thinking about another person's opinion when what we really want to do is further our own. But if only we did. Think of the picture mosaic for a moment. Hundreds of individual pictures organized by color subtleties to create a larger one. Just last week, I crowdsourced these pictures from our social media, asking people to send me a picture, or several of themselves and their families, at home and from places they've traveled. I have loved looking at your pictures, and every one of them makes me smile. Individually, each of our families is our focus, as it should be, but it shouldn't be the only one. We recognize that when we travel to new places and meet new people, it opens us up to languages and cultures, ideas and practices. The world is so much bigger than our little dot on the map. When we expand our worldview to include other people and other perspectives, we can make a larger mosaic. We open ourselves to the other, and we create something beautiful. Seeing the globe from this perspective makes me want to say wow once again, as if I were on top of that tower looking out over the city of Tel Aviv. The truth is, it's a lot harder to be wowed from the ground than it is from 50 stories up in the air. But it happened every single day of my trip. It was not only eye-opening, but I would go so far as to say that it was transformational. Because now when I look west, I see so much more than a beautiful beach. I see the mayor of a small Jewish town mingling with friends from a neighboring Arab village with everyone singing and eating together. And looking east, I see Omar, a young Palestinian who grew up never meeting half of his family because when the border lines were drawn in 1948, his family was split in two. And looking north, I remember Dr. Massad Barhoum, the CEO of the Galilee Medical Center, with the Syrian children who were skirted across the border by the IDF to be treated before returning to a war zone. And to the south, there's the Iron Dome, which protects my newfound friend Khen from rocket fire, but couldn't protect her family from the parachute she showed me that had floated into her backyard, exploding and catching everything on fire. These are the real people on the ground each of them with a story and a unique perspective that together makes up the reality that is modern Israel. They make me want to sit down and listen to their narratives. They inspired me to engage with people who are outside of my everyday circle. And most of all, they reminded me to open my eyes to the other with openness and respect. In the book of Isaiah, just a few chapters before the Haftorah portion that we read today, the prophet reminds us, Se'u marom enechem, lift up your eyes and see who created these. The sky, the moon, the stars, the universe, our planet. The rabbis teach, take the first letters of each of these words, shin, mem, ein, and it spells the word shema. Listen. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. This is what we have in common. This is who we are as Jews. The Shema demands us to lift up our perspective from our personal point of view to the one that encompasses all of us. So listen, just listen. 
Let's listen to each other. Let's listen to what each of us has to say. Let's tell our stories. Let's engage in civil and yet authentic conversation. Let's open ourselves to the potential and, the to, and to the perspective that this new year offers so that 5,779 brings a year of understanding, of consideration, of open-mindedness, and of peace. Kenya he song. May this be God's will, as we say. Now at the concluding portion of our service, we turn to the Alenu on page 222. Please rise.
this beginning of a new year, we remember those who stood by us at services such as this, who prayed with us, and whose memory abides in our hearts as a loving and enduring benediction. We say the Kaddish together. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabah v'yalma divrach v'rutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayi chon v'yom echon v'chayi dechol v'yit Yisrael v'agala v'zman kariv v'yimru amen yehei shmei rabah m'varach le'olam l'olmei olmaya Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase v'yit hadar v'yit dale v'yit halal shemei dekudeshah brichu v'yela min kol birchata v'shirata tushbachata v'nechemata da'amiran v'yalma v'yimru amen yehei shlomo raba min shemaya V'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Ose shalom v'mromav, hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. We pray may the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. And let us say, Amen. We conclude our service on page 225 with Ain Kelahenu. Try now. Oh. 